Today, we're going to talk about confidence intervals again. Our second type of confidence interval is called a one sample interval for a mean. The data going into this confidence interval is quantitative rather than categorical, as we had for our proportion confidence intervals. The formula is x bar plus or minus z star times sigma over the square root of n. Notice this formula. We must know the value of the population standard deviation, sigma. If we know the value of sigma, it seems likely that we will know the value of the population mean mu, since both values come from the same population distribution. If we know the value of mu, we do not need to use procedures to estimate the value of mu, nor do we need to use procedures to test any claims made about mu. Instead, we will use a one sample procedure for means that does not require us to know the value of sigma. You may be asking yourself, why don't we use a Z confidence interval for means? And that's because the two population means and standard deviation are unknown. If sigma is an unknown, we will use S, the standard deviation of our sample, as an estimate of sigma. Using S introduces variability since S varies across samples. We now have two sources of variation. X bar and S both vary across samples. The normal model no longer works, and we have to use the student's t distribution. While normal distributions are determined by mu, mean, and sigma standard deviation, t distributions are determined by a positive whole number called the number of degrees of freedom, which we denote with df. For the one sample confidence interval, degrees of freedom is n minus 1. We have to use degrees of freedom equals n minus 1 because we don't know sigma, and instead we have to use s. This estimate imposes one restriction, and we lose a degree of freedom. For more information, please see your textbook on pages 536 to 537. Since degrees of freedom are determined by sample size, so are t distributions. The t-distribution is centered at zero and bell-shaped, much like the standard normal distribution. The t-curves are more spread out than the z-curves. Check your textbook out on page 523 for more where there's more area in the tail. And as degrees of freedom increases, the spread of the corresponding t-curve decreases. Also, as degrees of freedom increases, the corresponding sequence of t-curves approaches the z-curve. So that we're really having t-curves versus z-curves here. The confidence interval. From your formula sheet, the confidence interval is the statistic plus or minus the critical value times the standard deviation of the statistic. The actual formula for our confidence interval for a t-curve is ci equals x bar plus or minus t star times our standard deviation over the square root of n. So this is our formula for the confidence interval um, using a t-curve. Let's look at some vocabulary associated with confidence intervals. x bar is the point of estimate. The point of estimate is the center of the confidence interval. T star is the critical value. You learn about critical values with critical um, slash rejection regions. We're going to use the T table and degrees of freedom, so you will need your formula packet for this. S over the square root of n is the standard error of X bar, an estimate of the standard deviation of the sample and distribution of X bar. And T star times S over the square root of n is the margin of error. The margin of error is how wide the confidence interval is. The confidence interval goes above and below x bar by the margin of error. Another way to write the confidence interval is x bar minus the margin of error, and then x bar plus the margin of error. So this is all vocabulary for your confidence interval. To interpret your confidence interval. So this is like your confidence interval template. You will state I am blank percent confidence that the mean blank is between blank and blank. Note, with quantitative data, you need to have units in your interpretation. Check-in conditions. 
So you, you need to have the random sample condition, state whether or not it's a random sample. And then is the population normal or sample is large enough or the normal probability plot of data is reasonably straight? or the histogram of data is unimodal and symmetric. Check in that order. So first, if you know the population distribution is normal, state that in your check conditions. If you are not told the population distribution is normal, check the sample size. If the sample size is large, usually um, greater than or equal to 30, note this using something like n equals 42, greater than 30, sample is large. Or if the sample is not large and you have the data, do a normal probability plot or histogram um, from your normal probability plot or histogram, you want to be able to conclude that it's plausible that your sample was drawn from a normal population. So let's look at an example. We need to create a 95% confidence interval to estimate the mean cadence for healthy men. So it states a study of the ability of individuals to walk in a straight line reported the following data on cadence, strides per second for a sample of n equals 20 randomly selected men. So that's our data there, okay? So first we're going to state our interval. So this is a one sample interval for a mean. That's a T interval. And we're having a 95% confidence interval to estimate. Mu, which equals the mean cadence for all healthy men. So again, state the type of interval, state the um, confidence level that you're going to estimate within context. Now our conditions. Twenty healthy men were randomly selected. With this, they did not, we do not know if our population distribution is normal and our sample size is not large enough. So we need to go through and get a normal probability plot of the sample. So the steps to do that are, one, you enter your data into list one. So I entered our data here into list one. Then go to stat plot, which is second in the y equals key, turn plot one on. Choose the normal probability plot, which is this one, the last one of the types of plot. Data is in list one, data axis is X. Also, please make sure in Y equals you have any equations either um, cleared out or shut off. Then go ahead and press zoom nine, which is zoom stat, because we this is statistics data, and it will zoom in for you. And you wanna look at your normal probability plot. The normal probability plot of the sample data is fairly straight, so it is plausible the data comes from a normal population. And that's what you would say, because this is fairly straight data. So we would say the normal probability plot of sample data is fairly straight. So it is plausible data comes from a normal population. And you want to draw a sketch of that normal probability plot. and include it.
Next is the mechanics. So our formula is x bar plus or minus t star times our standard deviation over the square root of n, our sam sample standard deviation. Also, we need to state our degrees of freedom. Our degrees of freedom equals n minus 1. So we're going to state all of this information. So first, let's start with our degrees of freedom. Degrees of freedom are 20 minus 1, which equals 19. So we'll need that to get our t star. We're going to find x bar and our standard deviation first, and then we'll go ahead and find t star. So to find x bar and our standard deviation, we already have our data in our calculator under list 1. So you would just do one variable statistics to get x bar and our standard deviation, which is sx, not sigma x, but sx. So you should get for x bar 0 0.9225. And for our sample standard deviation, you should get 0 0.08. 809. Okay, so now let's go ahead and find T star. T star, we're going to use table B from our formula packet. Okay, table B goes on two pages. Okay, what we're going to do is we are going to find T star for 95% confidence interval. So if you notice down here, this is our confidence intervals, the percent values, and 95% is over here. We're going to go up to our degrees of freedom, which is 19. So here I have my degrees of freedom of 19. This is my 95% column. And the corresponding value is 2.093. So that would be my T star. So now we go ahead and we plug everything into our formula. My X bar is 0. 9225, then I have plus or minus T star is 2.093 times 0 0.0809 all over the square root of 20. This ends up being 0 0.88762 and 0. 96338. So we would state I'm 95% confident that the mean cadence of for all healthy men is between 0 0.88762 and 0 0.96338 strides per second. Notice my units are included because this is quantitative data. You do not have to put all these numbers in. You can go to your calculator under stat and tests and find the correct confidence interval to use your data for. Um, if you have questions about that, please ask me in class.